Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey, and this is part number three of our five-part series talking about violating the spirit of the law with the study in Nehemiah chapter five. We're at a point in the story now where we're going to learn a lesson from Nehemiah again in this practical faith, how he put his money where his mouth was. Before we do that, let's pray that Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for this example. Let it be inspiration of what we can do today in Jesus name. Amen. Nehemiah chapter five is the story where Israel's making progress, but they still got problems and they're actually uh, taxing one another. They're um, bringing their brothers into debt and profiting off their debt in this debt cycle economy that the Lord is not pleased with and neither is Nehemiah as governor. So he addresses it. And when he addresses it, he does it straightforward. He just says, no, we can't operate like this because this is not what the Lord would have us to do. While you could have servants, technically, you're not supposed to be charging interest, even if that interest is lower than the interest you may be uh, that may be charged from other nations or these are the heathen nations around us. But what kind of witness would that be to them? Nehemiah says, and, he, and Nehemiah does a lot of talking and there's a lot of instructing of the people. But one of the reasons why his words had so much weight is because of how he lived. See, and when you speak the truth, that's why Nehemiah shows us you have to show the truth and that will give what you say so much power. When you speak it, show it. Nehemiah does it here in verse number 12 of chapter five. He says, when the people have responded to what Nehemiah has said, now in verse 12, this is where the people say, then said they will restore them and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to to this promise. See, he's practicing what he's preaching, right? Again, when these people make this claim, okay, we promise this is what we're going to do. Nehemiah says, no, 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 that's not how I roll. That's not my policy. I want to make sure that you all practice what you're going to say, because you see how I lead. And I put my, my actions where my money is. And I put my money where my actions are. What do I mean by that? Because when you see here in Nehemiah chapter five, what Nehemiah does is contrary to the tradition of other governors. And now normally they would, again, just hop on in in that tax train and they would just put their subjects under taxation and make money off of their position. Nehemiah never does that. In fact, the Bible says that he actually funds and takes care of his own family and the entire court through his own financial means. So he doesn't become a burden to the people and he doesn't use them for himself. And that's the temptation of all leadership. I don't care if it's in the church or out the church, in your home or outside of home, in the workplace, in the world, or in your own living room. We can never, as Christians, use our position for power. We're, to use, we're supposed to use our position for a positive influence. We're supposed to use our position to make a difference and to be a brighter light in a darker world. But when we take that position and use it for ourselves, we was not happy. And he wasn't happy with Israel and Nehemiah wasn't happy with his people. So when he talks to them, he's so serious about how this is done, how this is going to stop today. He even lays down a curse. Verse 13 says, also, I shook my lap and said, so God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise. In other words, if you don't practice what you promise, even thus be he shaken out in empty. And all the congregation said, amen, and praised the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. Now, in the verse before, Nehemiah actually bundles up these clothes. And that's what he's calling us to do. Hey, y'all, let's get our act together. Let's bundle up with Jesus and do what is right. But if we don't, and if you don't, he drops those clothes to be a symbol of now you had fullness, but you will be empty if you don't forsake this evil of using people for yourself. When Nehemiah does this and he gives this blessing and it attends the curse, it shows us that what we've got to understand is what God is telling us. When we read in verse 14, moreover, from the time that I was appointed to be their governor in the land of Judah, from the 20th year, even into the two and 30th year of Artaxerxes, the king, that is 12 years, I and my brethren have not eaten the bread of the governor. In other words, we don't do like others do. Even though I've had this position and other people have had it many times before me, it doesn't give me an excuse to make the same mistakes that they did. In fact, it should empower me. It should inform me that my ministry, my legacy, my employment, 
my academic performance is going to be based on what I can do. So whatever realm you're in, whether you're a student or whether you're working at work or whether you're working at home, whatever the case might be, I'm not going to use my past as an excuse. I'm going to do what is right. 